All right, we're here with uh, Dominic Cruz, Marcos Vegas, Fighter TV. Dominic, man, uh, you fighting your right kind of took me by surprise because I thought uh, you and Dillashaw were going to do it again, man. Uh, what would you think when they first told you that? Well, I don't mind. I mean, I've had a beef with Faber for a long time. Yeah, I know. So <laughs> why would I have a problem with that fight, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't. We were supposed to fight a long time ago. We were chalked up. You know, Faber's a car salesman. His his gift is promotion more than it is fighting. Mm -hmm. I believe that. So, uh, you know, let him promote. Let him do what he wants to do because he's promoting himself. That's how he's got himself into this ninth title shot situation. Mm -hmm. uh, Dillshaw fights more than he promotes. And so the thing is, the Dillshaw fight's always going to be there. That guy is not going to go anywhere in the division. He believes he's he's uh, one of the better guys in the division, and so he'll he'll get a tough fight that he needs to go out there and win. I think, and let him do it. Me and Faber are going to scrap, and either way, he fights me. You know, he gets his shot back. Just mm -hmm. just wait in line. When you got that phone call, where you're like, yes, I could finally just put this guy away. Exactly. And That's up. what it comes down to. Is, is just that? yeah, man. It's been ten years. We've been yeah, back and forth. Me and this guy. He doesn't <laughs> shut up. He doesn't go away. <laughs> Um, he's always running his mouth, always pr always promoting himself, uh, whether it's accepted or not, it doesn't matter. So, yeah, I'm ready to shut it all down, man. I mean, just done talking about that. No, you know, there was a, a while while you were seated out that you didn't really have to deal with Uriah because you were being the analyst that you were recovering. Uh, the bad blood, though, is it as bad as it was in the build-up to the second fight? Is it kind of calmed down, or is it still the same? Or? Well, it's always about what's said in the new, in the present, right? And he's yeah. always got something stupid to say. He doesn't Wait, speak very. You, yeah. Everything he says is built off of emotion. There's no real logic to it. And the things that I can't understand people that speak that way. So when he talks, it's just ignorance spewing from his mouth constantly. And so yeah, I still don't like him. But um, there's there's no hate because hate wastes your energy. I've never hated a guy, I just, I just think he's an idiot and I don't mind punching him in the face and I am excited to go out there and hurt him. What do you think in terms of, of the fight is really different from you given the fight you had with TJ and with him given the fights he's had up to this point? Uh, the difference with, between us is, I've, I mean look at my resume, I've won and beaten the top guys that I've faced and he hasn't. Mm. He's done great against top 15 guys but if you throw him up against any of the best, he talks about all his finishes and whatnot, but then he get, he loses. So what's the point of finishing everybody if you're going to lose when it counts uh, for the title? Um, he just he doesn't seem to grasp that logic, and I can never express that to him because he just doesn't grasp the fact that winning the title, you know, you can finish as many people as you want, but when you win the title, you're the best, and he hasn't proven he's the best ever. Why do you think he's come short so many times? Because uh, he's he pr he focuses a lot on promotion and less on the training. Yeah. Yeah, but then he gets the fights a lot because he focuses on the promotion. Mm -hmm. So it's like if I focus on the promotion, then it's been proven. If you focus on the promotion, everybody like everybody wants to see you fight. He just focuses on trying to get everybody on his side, everybody to like him, everybody come to my show, everybody tweet me, everybody Instagram me, everybody social media me. Once he does that, you know, it takes away from his training. He's always signing shirts, going to this, going to that promoting his organizations and you know it's hard to do all that it's hard to coach a top-notch team and handle all these responsibilities and be the best fighter on earth uh, I'm very focused individual I focus on what I need to to win fights because that's my portion of this life and so I'm gonna go out there and be very focused on whooping how's the foot because I know you were uh, you mentioned something after the fight yeah uh, I, what I, I have a I tore my plantar fascia tendonitis in, the, in that oh, fight it's, I, I it's, it's pretty crappy but uh, uh, it was hurting before the fight, and then I had to tough it out and just go in there into the fight with it, and it tore all the way instead of uh, just hurting. And so I had to heal that up, get, get some rehab on it. I'm constantly rehabbing it. I'm still rehabbing it, and it's a non-stop thing. Once you have it, you just, I'm good, I'm here, I'm fighting, and that's why I'm here. Yeah. Shake up though in that way with Connor losing uh, to Nate. I'm sure you saw the fight. What'd you make of the way he fought? Well, see, the, the thing is, uh, who, or the way who fought? Uh, Connor fought Nate. No, oh, I thought he fought great. I mean, he went out there and landed some huge shots on on Nate early. Uh, it looked it looked like Connor McGregor, but he finishes everybody usually in that first round. And that's the thing, if you count on the finish and you know it's going to happen and it does 
that's it. What's your plan B? Well, plan B was getting tired. That's the end of it. That was the end of the fight. Conor McGregor got tired trying to kill somebody, and I get that. Fun to watch, but the five round champion is, has to be there. That has to be there. You gotta be there for five rounds. You gotta be ready for it. And we're talking about a guy who gassed out on somebody who came in on one week's notice. So, I think Conor McGregor showed that he can get tired. Shows that he's still as dangerous as ever, but he also showed he can get tired. The second fight you had with Garaya, I remember watching it. He dropped you a few times. He dropped me I want to ask you, you know, you know, what do you think is going to be the difference compared to that fight? Because that's not the last fight that we've seen of you two, you know? Well, I don't know what the difference is. I just go out there and fight my game, fight the way I did last time, and I'll yeah. be fine. You know, I, I, I threw everything in the kitchen sink at him, and he backed up the entire fight, waited for a good right hand. That's what Faber does. He, he uh, conserves energy. He's the best in the world at conserving energy so that he can land that big right hand, and all he's got to do is rock you. And because he conserves, 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 when he does happen to rock you, he's got all that energy to go after the finish. But if he doesn't have that finish, he doesn't know what to do with himself. He has no other way to win other than conserve and look for the finish. So I know that. He doesn't. He'll never accept it. He'll never admit it. So I'll keep beating him. Is he better now than he was back then, or do you feel he was better back then than he was now? Uh, I think that he stayed exactly the same. So no growth whatsoever. I think that he's good. Uh -huh. He's dangerous. He's always got to punch his chance. He's got his weapons, but he hasn't grown. He's the same guy that he was yeah, yeah, when I fought him in 2007. You know, same guy. Since a few years ago, it's 2016. Different game. Well, you know, uh, it's good catching up with you on, on an ending note. It's cool that uh, you guys are fighting over there. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. Forum's gonna be dope. Look at all the uh, probably all these people are gonna be here. They gonna be there. It's gonna be packed. It's close to home. I'm pumped. All right, man, Dominic. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Cheers.